evolution until very recently has been as five sensory humans evolving through the exploration of physical reality. That's the same thing as the pursuit of external power. Now we have crossed a threshold. We are in new territory, brand new domain. We are now becoming multi-sensory. That means we are no longer confined to the five senses. Now I use these terms because the five senses together form a single sensory system and the object of that sensory system is physical reality. Mm. That's what it's designed to detect. Yes. As we become multi-sensory, we move beyond the limitations yeah. of the five senses. And we now are evolving through a different mechanism than the exploration of physical reality. We are evolving through responsible choice with the assistance and guidance of non-physical guides and teachers. That's a very profound statement, and one of the uh, handles that I get on it is the idea that something is happening right now in our age that's, that's of significance here. It's not as if, I mean, one might say, well, we've always had access to these multi-sensory modalities, but something's happening now. Indeed it is, mm -hmm. as we speak. Yeah. At this very moment and for all of the moments to come, it is happening now. Mm -hmm. We are in the most significant evolutionary transition our species has ever encountered. Mm -hmm. There is no way to compare what we are now experiencing with anything in our past. Yeah. This new event has no historical antecedent. The only event in the history of our species that compares with this one is Genesis. Mm -hmm. And this is a new kind of Genesis the genesis of our species into conscious awareness and participation in a larger fabric of life, in non-physical reality. Mm -hmm. In other words, if we look at evolution, we're beginning to understand ourselves in terms of our spiritual evolution and not just our ability to uh, have dominion uh, over the other kingdoms of nature. Exactly. Exactly. We have always been involved in spiritual evolution. We are spiritual beings. We have always been spiritual beings, and we will always be spiritual beings. The difference is that now we are becoming aware of ourselves as spiritual beings, yeah. and that is making all the difference. How do you define the soul, and how does it relate to this idea of ourselves as spiritual beings? The soul of an individual, your soul, and my soul is that part of us that is immortal. Mm -hmm. Your personality is that part of you that was born into time, that matures in time, or at least grows older in time, and then decays and passes away. Like my body. Like your body, your personality, your body, your intuitional structure. Mm -hmm. These are all uh, uh, tools, energy tools of the soul. Mm -hmm. Your soul existed before your personality came into being. It will exist after your personality came into being. All of the learning, all of the activities in which you are involved as a being, as Jeffrey Mishloff, go into the evolution of your soul. It is your soul that is learning. It is your soul that is growing. It is your soul that is moving ever closer toward you. Uh, perfection, mm -hmm. if we can use that word. Mm -hmm. The sense that I get is that the soul is but like a not, spark of the divine. But it's not as though perfection doesn't already exist. Mm. We live in a perfect universe. Yeah. We live in a perfect universe of life. And what is so magnificent is that we are beginning to see that mm -hmm. as multi-sensory humans. Now, I do not mean now that all five billion of us on this planet are going to be multi-sensory before the end of this century. It may take several generations, but not as long as you might think. Mm -hmm. This is a momentous undertaking that our species has, uh, has entered. And it is affecting everything without yeah. exception. By multi-sensory, you're really referring to like inner vision. 
it would seem to me, a perception of the world of the spirit within us. Yes, and without us. Mm -hmm. There is no aspect of the world that is not the world of spirit. This is not a material world that we are living in. It is a spiritual world. Mm -hmm. How have you come to be convinced of that? With much difficulty, slowly, and then with increasing acceleration mm -hmm. and pleasure. Yeah. I have come to see these things in the course of my experience. And it's my joy and my pleasure and my fulfillment to share them. Mm -hmm. Now you talk about and, and write about spiritual guides and spiritual helpers as, as a normal uh, part of the soul's evolution and the evolution of the personality as well. Yes, yes. Everyone has guides and teachers, non-physical guides and non-physical teachers. Mm -hmm. Now non, a guide is not the same as a teacher. A guide is what you might call uh, a consultant that's mm -hmm. called in on a project basis. Mm -hmm. For example, if you uh, say you want to, uh, as you have, create a television series with a certain quality about it of integrity, uh, intellectual uh, acuity, and spiritual depth, you will draw to yourself, as you have, guides that can provide you with just this assistance. Now, teachers are more impersonal. Mm -hmm. Uh, or well, actually, in, in their relation to us, they appear to be more personal. They appear to be such that we can give them names or speak to them as though they were other personalities. In fact, they are impersonal energy dynamics. Mm -hmm. A non-physical teacher is uh, like a friend that knows you very well, knows the deepest parts of you, knows all of your struggles, knows all of your aspirations, knows all of the things that you are ashamed of and are working on, and strives only for your best interest, strives only for the ever-increasing ex ever alignment of your personality with your soul. Mm -hmm. Having a non-physical teacher and being able to be in conscious communication with this teacher is like being in contact with all of this and at the same time a consummate psychotherapist. One who really knows you intimately and it, it, you didn't use the term but I think what you're saying is this is a being who loves you unconditionally. Yes, you could, yes, that's so. Now, while we're on the, uh, while we're on the uh, matter of teachers, let's um, uh, clarify some things that are important here. A teacher does not make decisions for you. Mm -hmm. As you decide to move into a relationship consciously with a non-physical teacher, it's not a matter, a matter of giving yourself mindlessly <coughs> over mm -hmm. to the control of another. Right. A non-physical teacher would not and could not make your decisions for you because no one can assume responsibility for how you choose to use your energy. Mm -hmm. But a non-physical teacher can help you to see the symbolism of everything that happens in your life at each moment. Mm -hmm. A non-physical teacher can help you to see at each point of decision, which means at every moment, what probable future will unfold if you take this course of action or that course of action or that course of action so that you can see for yourself if these different courses of action if each of these different courses of action will produce consequences for which you are willing to assume responsibility. Mm -hmm. And if you find a course of action that will produce consequences for which you are not willing to assume responsibility, then don't choose it. And if you find a course of action, and you will, that will produce consequences, that will produce a probable future for which you are willing to take responsibility, then move in that direction if that's your choice. Mm -hmm. That's responsible choice. Now, how would you distinguish between this kind of contact with a non-physical teacher and, and, on the other hand, just having a very highly developed sense of intuition? They are identical. Your intuition is your 
intuition is the voice of the non-physical world. Mm -hmm. So to the five sensory personality, intuition is it's trivial. Mm -hmm. In fact, psychology doesn't even uh, recognize it. Psychology is the study of uh, perception, affect, and cognition. In other words, it's the study of the personality, mm -hmm. even though the word means study of the soul. Yeah.